truth is, few have been ignored by Washington for as long as American Indians. Hey, I am uh, I'm Rick Klein and Mitch Van Etten. And uh, we are here with uh, Save Our Tribal Youth. We're making a documentary uh, about, uh, well, basically, right before the election, we saw a, uh, a video on YouTube, a speech that uh, President-elect Obama at the time made to, uh, to the Native American people, promising, you know, not only change, but promising to go back to, to honoring treaties and having a voice at the table and this and that. And, and now that he's appointed a, a green energy czar whose main platform is, is bringing renewable energy to impoverished areas, you know, we thought it's, it's, it's time to shine a light on, uh, on this corner of the world. We need more than just a government-to-government -government relationship. We need a nation-to-nation -nation relationship. And I will make sure that tribal nations have a voice in the White House. All my reservations, all our prison camps, Prison Camp 344, a.k.a. Pine Ridge. Prison Camp 343, a.k.a. Cheyenne River. Prison Camp 345, a.k.a. Rosebud. Where are you at? Let my people go. Let my people go. <laughs> I want to um, send out a greeting with a warm handshake and a good heart. My Lakota name is Echoes After Woman. My English name is Joyce Wheeler. And um, I'm here to talk a little bit about the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and the Ogawa Lakota people, who are my people. Um, one of the things that um, we were just talking about earlier was the suicide rates here on Pine Ridge how astronomical they are in um, relation to the United States. We're like at 300% the national average. Uh, we've lost um, 32 young people in the last um, four years, four or five years. And um, another thing I wanted to focus on was about the spiritual aspects of our people and the self-belief and self-love that's missing in our young people. Chief of Police on, this, on the Pine Ridge Reservation, and he told us statistically, 26 calls on 26 suicide attempts. 26. And so I just got done saying that we love life, but yet someone that could be watching this could wonder, well, if they do, then why is there so many suicide attempts? I believe that a big part of that is that self-love and not having that, um, not being able to find that within themselves but seeking it outside of themselves, whether it's through drugs and alcohol, relationships, um, fast cars, anything that um, can fill that empty way that they feel inside. And um, that goes back to a lot of our spiritual, our spiritual um, teachings. Because if God really exists in them, through them, no child, no child, black, white, Asian, Indian, shall ever go without a meal. No child should be homeless. No child should ever feel the abuse of a parent. A mother and father. No child should ever be molested. No child. But this is the only thinking God. It means nothing. A dollar. This is paper. Look what it does. This paper that I just tore up destroys so many lives. Destroys so many lives. Abuse so many children. Our children are still suffering because of sticking paper. A lot of kids are born into alcoholism. A lot of kids are born into like the drug problem here, you know, and they don't ask for that, you know, and it's just, it's just the way it is, you know. Putting us here on the reservation was like putting us in a, a, a war camp. You know, there's nothing here for anybody. You know, there's nothing here. We don't have things that the cities have to where these kids can go out and say, well, you know, 
I want to be an actor. I want to be, you know, um, a governor. I want to be something different, an astronaut. Uh, you know, we don't have that stuff here. Once you get to a certain age, you either have to go off to school or else you have to just stay home and have kids and basically raise a family. Oh, the other side was all black from the mold. Then they all the all the way around the room, the edges, the about two, three feet of black mold. And all the kids have asthma. Um, we had nowhere to go. We had to live here. Yes, yes. my whole family has asthma. Um, my grandkids are asthmatic because of us. Chronic asthma. They, have, they want to come home. But uh, it's a home ownership home. So whatever they get, they have to get on their own. And nobody has money around here like that. I'll be lucky if I ever wear a designer coat, you know. How could I afford that? You know, with one designer coat, I could buy my kids food for a month, maybe two months, you know. With these big Hummers that they drive, you know, how, how much is the Hummer? $50,000 less, maybe more? I could buy three or four homes for my Lakota sisters out here. Um, to address the issue of poverty, uh, when we're the richest in the world, but yet we're the poorest. If we don't have the capital, and if we're precluded or excluded from, say, the green economy, how are we to be part of the solution? We decided we don't want to ruin the earth, so we decided to grow industrial hemp. We generated and we used solar power, and we built the first hemp house in America. And we had to bring the hemp in from London at the price of $22,000. Mm. When I could have just went in my little pasture here, and there was enough hemp here, all it would have took was three, four hundred dollars of processing to build this house. My grandson was three and a half the first year I planted hemp and he was right beside me. He put the seeds in the ground and when the plants came up he said, Papa those are mine, I grew these and he was so proud and then when the DEA came, oh he was in pain because they took something that was his and it affected me but the impact it had on my grandchildren and all was so mad when I stood there in front of the U.S. Marshals and the FBI and the DEA and other sheriffs and cops and they held me at gunpoint and I was helpless. I couldn't defend my family on my own land. There was 24 armed agents, agents that came here with guns, machine guns, held me and my little brother Percy at gunpoint and they proceeded to eradicate our hemp. We were born to succeed but the governments that govern our bodies are afraid of us in succeeding. It, it's like they're not allowing us to succeed at all. You don't mean to cry but I think about my sister Loa and her home. It's some of the camera being seen. Her home, the roof is falling off. The walls are coming down, and yet she has pride in her heart. And she welcomes you into her home. And she says, This is my home, come in without shame or guilt. And you know, of course, our higher power has been taking care of us. So it's been okay, but you know. Uh, it's really hard to say I believe that the answers lie in the community and we got to, instead of going out and like recruiting these people from off the reservation to help our people, we need to start with our communities, you know, um, just make a spark in some people because people do, if you sit and talk with people around here on the reservation, they really do know a lot, you know, and they do have the answers of what can open up, you know, um, open up um, hope. I was talking about the people coming to our reservation, our senior reservation. They only seen it through the eyes of a car, you know, through the wheel, by the wheels of cars, through our highways. They haven't actually rode the homeland, where our riders and our children, I mean, the adult riders, come come across through the country. We a few roads we followed, you know, where we wasn't allowed to cross at the time of the year, like now they're calving season and things like that. But for the foremost, we was out in the wild and. Um, it's very excellent, and some of the outcomes of our program is having children's self-esteem built up, courage, um, learning 
their accomplishment of riding a horse 130 miles. It's very beautiful. Um, you see the smiles and they, they look tired, but they're still full of energy. It's very beautiful. Well, what we need a lot more money for too is to help um, bring a lot more fruits imported into the reservation. Because I feel sometimes that we are like a different country, you know, because we don't have a big aisle of fruit, you know, of good foods like that, you know, organics, whatever, you know. Um, our aisle down here in Sioux Nation is probably about six and a half feet maybe of fruit, and that's it. And that's not a lot, you know, so I think we need, um, you know, just more fruit given out, basically. More fruit grown, gardens. Uh, we use this one for fundraising. We've got other gardens in other communities. We have one in Potato Creek, Wombly, uh, Martin, Sunrise, Wakpane Lake, Kyle. And we help. Elders Gardens for Grandkids, too. Yep. Elders. We wanted the community gardens to be part of the community, so the farmers markets that we're trying to get going to, we uh, wanted a farmers market garden for. Yeah. So that way you didn't have to take away from the community to do that. And then also for those who don't want to do gardening, they can just come to the market and buy fresh food. Or you have traditional gatherers bringing food, gardeners, farmers, ranchers, artists, musicians. You know, we'd really like to show them what's possible so that more and more vendors come. Um, the community gardens, ideally, we want to get to the point where we come in, we till it, we provide the plants, but the community itself does all the planting. And we have one the community we're going to do next to Potato Creek, that's the way it is. We come in, we till, we plant, but they take it over and so that they take care of it so that eventually we're just a resource that has seeds or whatever. We want to create heirloom seed banks. Um, so that everything's so self-sustaining because like you said, there's so little fresh food. Trying to raise awareness uh, as well as, as raising funds for SODI. Um, they, they try to get people to, to sponsor youth on the res as well as uh, some of the elderly. And I believe we have a truck full of clothing coming in from LA to Evergreen here in about the next uh, 90 minutes or so. Wow. Okay. How do you like my birds here? They are gorgeous. They're always singing. You wake up to them singing, you go to bed to them singing. Nice. Everything that we have here, uh, the sharing, the humility, the love, the compassion, uh, we, we feel it every day. I would love for people to feel that too, you know, instead of looking at everything in, in, in dollars and cents. Uh, you can't put a price on something like this, you know, but out there, meaning off the reservation, there's a price on everything. I understand the tragic history between the United States and tribal nations. And we've got to acknowledge that truth if we're going to move forward in a fair and honest way. Well, you want peace in other countries? Well, learn how to live it here first. Make it right with Indian people first, then other countries will take you seriously. Then they'll take you seriously. Live it. And people will see it. And then they know what you speak about is truth. So United Snakes, let my people go. Yes, my name is Moses Brinksplain, Lakota, Lakota. Today, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if nothing else, if we don't unite against the destruction against the Mother Earth, we will have a common future that is void of clean air, clean water, and basic freedoms. We must reach out our hands out to embrace others to the cause of life. We must do our best from wherever we are with whatever tools available to enhance and further our quality of life. We must find a way to break down the barriers that divide one people from another. We must find the things we have in common and find ways to solve our differences as basic humanity. We must evolve to a higher level of thinking or to, as you might say, a traditional level of thinking, which obviously is superior to what they call progress today. That's why we at Save Our Tribal Youth and Crawford Multimedia need your help. I'm Rick Klein, director and executive producer of We're Still Here, a documentary about the Lakota people and life on Pine Ridge. The president made an impassioned plea 
via a speech on YouTube two days before the election, which he promised the Native American people all kinds of things in the way of help and hope. That inspired us to create this documentary, to paint for him and the rest of the world a picture of what life is like for the average Native American in this country. The simple fact is, every day on the reservation, unemployment is between 90 and 95 percent. Teen suicide is 300 times the national average. In May, they had 28 calls for attempted suicide. That would be unacceptable in any other community in America. It should be unacceptable on the reservation as well. Local wind.